technology of writing was really a pretty linear sort of thing. It was, you know, writing was generally written for at first on clay tablets and then later on scrolls. And so the, um, you know, the, the, the sort of unit of information was a, you know, a, a thing that was typically read from beginning to end. That all changed at the end of the Roman Empire when you saw the beginning of what we now think of as a book, which I would argue was a pretty disruptive technology in its own right. And one of the things that makes it disruptive is the fact that uh, it, I would argue, is, a, is an early form of random access memory storage. If you think about it, a book is a technology where you can address the, you know, the, the contents of a book at multiple points in and, the text. And what, what constituted a book in the time period we're talking about? Well, that's an interesting question. What, what is a book? I think the book that, that, what we tend to mean when we say book today is a, you know, a thing with a, a cover and two pages. The earliest books were, um, were actually bound between pieces of wood, and they were called codex, in, library, in the library world, they'll call them codex books, which mm -hmm. comes from that term, Latin codex. Um, and they were basically, it was a technology that emerged sort of at the end of the Roman Empire. And what's interesting about it is the, uh, you know, most of the, the information, say, at the Library of Alexandria was stored on scrolls. So these were, you know, sort of, you know, kept on shelves, rolled up, you know, and... Uh, and if you wanted to look up something away. early in the book that you were halfway through, you, you right. had to spend so you had to work your way time. through it, yeah. right, right. So. But uh, somebody came up with this idea of sort of binding pages together. And the interesting thing is that those codex books were, were really um, pretty sturdy, little uh, storage devices. And when Rome was sacked and when the ancient world sort of, uh, you know, fell apart in the, the, you know, in the first uh, few centuries AD, the, uh, the, the, te the, the units of information that survived that tended to proliferate were the, were the codex books. The scrolls typically burned really easily and they sort of went up in flames. And as, uh, you know, the, the sort of classical world um, kind of fell apart during the Dark Ages, the, the information that survived was typically stored in these books, in these codex books. And you saw the, uh, you know, as, and, and for the most part, the, the, the sort of European world fell into a period of mass illiteracy, and the, it was really only the, uh, you know, the temple scribes, the, 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 the monks in the monasteries and the scriptoria were the ones who preserved the technology of writing, reading and writing. And these books sort of persisted. And it was during this period that they, they developed sort of interesting new ways of sort of indexing and organizing that information. I think one particularly interesting example of that is what's called a canon table. And uh, these were, uh, Basically, kind of visual indexes. Here's an example of one. From uh, this is a 12th century example. From uh, 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 it was developed by some monks in St Albans Abbey in, in England. And what's interesting about it is th uh, it's in Latin. But what it what it does is it uh, it provides a, an index to the uh, the books of the of the New Testament from to the Gospels. And it provides so if you think about the Gospels, if you're familiar with them, you know that you often see the same stories appearing in multiple Gospels. And using this technology, the, the monks devised this way of sort of zooming out from this collection of texts and providing a visual index so that you could see, all right, here's this story and here's where it appears in you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and so forth. Um, and so I think it was an early example of a kind of hypertext-like interface to this, uh, you know, this sort of random access storage technology of the book. So I think it's an interesting sort of Can um, I ask antecedent. a question, yeah. if you don't mind? No, no, no. It just occurs to me that comparing the scroll to a codex, mm -hmm. The codex is like a random access scroll because sure. you yeah, cut yeah. the thing up and you make it possible to touch any part of it pretty much as easily as any other part. Exactly, right. Almost like splitting it up into packets or, or something. But in the, in the sense that, the, that the, uh, we, we, we often describe the internet, maybe not completely accurately, as somewhat democratizing, mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about an era in which access of information, first of all, was available only to the literate, which would be a smaller group, and then uh, Religious, religious groups, et cetera. So how, how, did, how did the power relationship differ in terms of knowledge and information mm -hmm. in that area? Well, that's an interesting question. I mean, I think that if you, there have been several periods you know, throughout recorded history where you've seen these kind of inflection points where a new technology emerges and it sort of uh, destabilizes the balance of power. I think the uh, one obvious example would be the, and it's probably an overused example, but the Gutenberg revolution when the, uh, when the printing press was, um, was invented. You know, up until that time, uh, you know, information was still, you know, reading was still largely the province of a illiterate, illiterate few. Uh, when Gutenberg came along, it took a period of centuries for this to happen, but, uh, you know, it was a very democratizing technology, and you saw this, this tension between the kind of uh, institutional hierarchy of the, of the Roman Catholic Church butting up against this very democratizing um, uh, technology that allowed printed information to proliferate, and it was accompanied soon thereafter by more and more people learning to read, learned to take advantage of this technology, and, uh, and you saw the, uh, 
you know, the, the, a sort of a, well, there's a, a historian named Elizabeth Eisenstein has made the case that the printing press was a you know instrumental in the destabilization of the of the Roman Church and the, the and the spread of the Protestant Reformation. Mm -hmm. uh, that those two things really went hand in hand, and so I think that's an example of where the you know the access to the the technology of of, of uh, you know of literacy and uh, intellectual production sort of created this destabilizing effect.